welcome everybody and as the as I say there the um, presentation today is be aware by with care and that's the theme of our display also even though I'm from the product safety area from fair trading and we've got a whole raft of safety information on our website today I'm actually going to talk about being preventing consumer problems before they arise so it's when you're actually in environments like this the kind of things you need to, to be aware of so what I'm actually going to speak about today is this. So we've got about 20 minutes, so I'll have to race through it. Um, the key issue is when buying nursery products and toys for your baby. Questions to ask yourself and the retailer when buying products for your baby. Um, consumer guarantees, which is a, a, a kind of thing you need to be aware of because a lot of people aren't all that um, familiar with their consumer rights, and you do have plenty of them. Internet shopping precautions, they, you do need special care when buying over the internet. We've got a bit of guidance about that. And I'm, I hope to talk briefly about our Baby Slings campaign, which we're running at the show this, this time. You may have seen something on the news last night. We had the TV cameras over here yesterday. It's a, it's a, um, a very important campaign for us. So hopefully I can just bring you up to speed on that. Okay, so what do we do in the Office of Fair Trading? Well, you know, we're very busy people. Um, we're, we've got 200 people around the state. We do things like we enforce compliance with the mandatory safety standards. And a lot of products here that the show today must meet safety standards before they're supplied. So you need to be familiar with that. We educate consumers and business people about buying and selling safe products. That's a major part of our work, and I guess that's what I'm doing here today. And we also get involved with some of the national issues, standard setting, and anything that happens nationally. So, so um, yeah, we're a very busy group. Um, one thing I just want to point out to you, um, I'm going to talk about some of the pitfalls about when buying consumer products. Now, I just wonder if you think what this might duplicate. The name on the card will probably give it away. It's a choke check. What this is, I and mean, we've got these cards on our display over there, over 31 we're at. This essentially duplicates a child's throat for, for an under three. So anything that fits in that dimension there, which is about the size of an old 35mm film canister, if anybody can remember that, the days before digital, right? That duplicates that. That's a truncated cylinder. It's part of the Australian standard for toys that size. Anything that fits entirely into that cylinder, part of a toy in particular, that's too small for a child under three. And that includes parts that break off a toy when subject to use and abuse by a child under three. That's a choke test. A very interesting little thing. So I, you just pop it out like that. I'm not going to assemble it together because, you know, that'll probably take me 20 minutes, to be honest. So, so that's sitting over there. Take one along, and there's some guidance on there, too, about uh, toy safety for the under threes, OK? We spend a lot of time on making sure toys, in particular, are safe for the under threes in this country. It's a highly regulated part of the marketplace, and we take a very... We take a very hard line approach to supplies that sell unsafe toys in this country, you know. We prosecute you know, 20, 30 people every year on, the, on that so, sort of activity. Okay. Yeah, so that's the choke chest cylinder. Of course, the ones that are used in the, in the testing laboratories aren't made out of cardboard, right? So just have thought I'd raise that, mention that. Okay. I wonder if you can name some of the products that have to meet mandatory standards. Yeah. Probably can. Full-size cots, portable cots, toys for children under three, I mentioned that, projectile toys, chemicals in toys, lead and heavy metals, um, baby walkers, baby bath aids, car seats, babies' dummies, prams and strollers, and children's nightwear. All those products have to meet safety standards before they can be supplied in this country, and they're enforced by us. There's some tips, though, I want to give you about buying products, generally speaking. Be cautious about buying second-hand products or using products that have been handed down from your sister or brother. I mean, it's very difficult to say to them, no thanks, I don't think that's safe enough for my child. It might have been in the family for 100 years, but I can guarantee you a cot supplied 30 years ago would not meet the current standards today. Neither will a stroller, portable cot, or any of those other products I mentioned. Just be careful about that, you know, but I know it's very difficult to do. It ends up in the garage for another 50 years, you know. Um, Second-hand is a problem too, but if you buy second-hand products from a, a person in business or a second-hand shop, 
they also have to meet the safety standards. But if you're buying privately from, from somewhere, they don't have to comply with standards, okay? Be very cautious about that. So if you're at a garage sale, markets, that sort of environment, and people are selling their private products, they won't be safe. Sleeping services for your baby. That's another issue that, that comes up from time to time with products that we see. A lot of parents think that you, the, the ideal surface is a soft one, you know, because it's comfortable for your child. The, the opposite is actually true. The mattress or the sleeping surface has to be as firm as possible and, and really tight fitting in the cot so the child, if it does happen to roll over, can't go face down in the crevices. We do see suffocations that way. Don't put an extra cot in a portable cot. You see the little mattresses there, about 50 centimetres? They're fine for a child at, at that weight. They don't have the same pressures that we have. They're perfectly comfortable. And if you put an extra cot in a mat in, in a, a, an extra mattress in a cot, you really are asking for trouble. Well, and that certainly reduces the risk of suffocation. That's what we try and do. And sleep positioners are another sleep positioners and cot restraints are another thing that you need to be think very carefully about using. We recommend you don't use them un unless you're advised by your doctor to do so. There has been a number of incidents in the US in particular where children have suffocated when they've gone face first into cot bumpers and sleep positioners, you know, the wedges and stuff like that. So we don't recommend you use those unless you, it's on medical advice. And it's chances are you'll see some of those products around here today. But if you think you're getting overwhelmed by all this information, don't worry too much about it because there is some excellent websites available you can go, you can get all the information I'm talking about today. And there'll be a slide at the end of this. In fact, I'll go to that straight away, because only three slides. Um, all, that info, all the information I'm talking about is there in written form today. So it's really important you visit that website. You can also subscribe to a newsletter we put out called Safety Zone. You can access that through the Office of Fair Trading's website. Every three months, we provide updates on product safety information, new standards, things that we've had to remove, banned products, all that sort of stuff. Really useful information. Now, the next thing, um, as you know, the vast majority of products supplied into Australia are imported. And there's a misconception out there that there's someone checking these products as they're coming into the country. Well, you know what? That doesn't happen. It happens very rarely that we pick something up at the barrier. So you have to be extra cautious about that. And that's why you really need to take, you know, to take extra precautions when you're buying stuff for your baby. Um, we rely on all sorts of things, you know, we rely on traders' goodwill. Now, fortunately, the, the nursery product industry in Australia is very safety conscious. But you feel, so feel absolutely comfortable about asking as many questions about safety as you like. And if you, if you don't answer to your satisfaction, well, have a look at some of the information that's available on the websites. Come and see us at our stand and see if we can clarify that for you, you know. We're quite happy to take complaints, by the way, about if you think something's unsafe here, you know especially because I'm going in a minute or two, so I won't be taking it anyway. No, but, but we're quite happy to, if, if there are problems that you see here today, because we can't be everywhere. In fact, I don't think I've ever seen so many people here in my life, but, um, so please feel free to do that. So that's the good news, though, about the Australian nursery products industry. But that might not be the case if you're buying from overseas. So be very cautious about products from, over, from internet sites overseas where you can't track that back. Because your rights, even though you still have them, trying to enforce them from an OCS company, as you can imagine, is going to be very difficult. So do the research, okay? Now, we're going to go into some questions now about what you need to firstly ask yourself and then perhaps ask the re retailer. The first thing is, is it safe? You do your research, you know, before you buy. You spend a lot of money setting up a nursery, you know, and so the last thing you want is to inadvertently put something in there that A, you don't need, or B, is, uh, is unsafe. You can check whether the product's been recalled, by the way, historically, by the Product Safety Australia, the recalls website there. Do a quick look at that. You know, or you'll find that that's really useful um, because a lot of these products that we talk about here today do actually get recalled. And it could be some several years ago, you know? So be mindful of that. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Choice. They're the Australian Consumers Association. They test products and they do, um, they publish the test results in their magazine but they also put a lot of that information on their website as well. It's very, very useful. You can get a, a, an idea of how safe 
or what quality of product is compared to some of the other ones. But of course you have to do that before you come to somewhere like here where there's just masses of stuff, you know? You, you'll find it really difficult to make the comparison here on the spot. So the more you can do prior to coming to a, a display like this, is um, you'll find you'll be much better off. But the choice people are, um, are a really, really good source of information. You also have to think about what type of warranties and guarantees the supplier provides for you. There are some, there are a number of things that um, under the law you're entitled to. You know, it's got to be safe for its intended purpose. It's got to match the description um, and stuff like that. But it's the extra stuff that you need to um, challenge them on, you know. The longer the warranty, you know, you would then assume that the more secure that, that they're comfortable that that product's a good one. They don't have to provide that, ex that extra warranty, by the way, you know. Um, and once again, buying over the internet, they might give you every warranty under the sun, but once you try and enforce that, you know, you're going to have a real problem. Another thing is, um, can you assemble the product yourself? Some products are actually quite tricky to assemble. They're flat packed. If you can't, you know, make sure there's access to someone who can for you and do it safely. Um, fortunately, a lot of the products that you'll see today, cots and stuff, for example, you can only erect them or assemble them one way, you know, so you really, if you're, you know, if you're doing something wrong, you know, screwing holes into, into a cot, something like that, you've done something seriously wrong. But be mindful of that, because some of them can be a bit tricky to put together. Can you get spare parts for them? You know, either is, it, is it a run-out product where, you know, you may not be able to get spare parts? Certainly with second-hand items, you're not going to get spare parts for those, you know? So be mindful of that too. Does it come with a lot, plenty of instructions? Um, Try and get a look at that before, you know? All right, we spoke a little bit about, con I touched on the issue of consumer guarantees, but you know, you do get certain rights. You know, suppliers have got a guarantee that the products are acceptable quality. And one of these is that they must be safe. So the onus is on them to prove to us, as a government regulator, that those products are safe. Um, the, the, they've also got a guarantee that they're fit for their, for their disclosed purpose and what they've specified it for. They also guarantee that the description of the goods matches the description that was provided in any catalogue or internet site. And of course, that it must match any samples that they showed you at the time of sale. And any, any extra warranties that they provide for you, they've got to be able to follow those through. But that's something that, um, if you do feel as though you're, you've been misled in that way, the Office of Fair Trading does have a complaint um, investigation process, and you should contact us about that. But you do have rights to seek um, refunds and, any, and some other remedies too if you feel as though those rights have been breached. Um, you don't have an automatic right to a refund, of course, you know. So if you just change your mind, for example, when you get the product home, um, then unfortunately you're kind of on your own unless the goodwill of the supplier will help you out with that. Um, but there's a simple checklist on the Office of Fair Trading website about what you would be entitled to under some circumstances because you're talking about major or mi minor failures. A major failure would, if the product did breach safety standards, you would definitely be entitled to a refund under those circumstances. So, what about buying over the internet? I bet everybody here today has done, done that at one stage or another. I know, I know I certainly have, you know, and I've been ripped off too, you know, and I work in the consumer protection industry, you know, so there's, a, there's an admittance for a start. So look, some of the protections, are, I mean, it's very convenient to buy over the internet, but you're also very vulnerable in your own home, believe it or not. You know, that's why door-to-door -door sellers are still making millions of dollars, you know, because once they cross that doorstep, believe it or not, you know, you're really fair game. So you just need to be mindful of that when you're on the internet. It's the same type of process. So there's some simple tips to follow. Um, you can buy from, always try, wherever possible, to buy from a, a reliable business or a reputable business that has you know, a bricks and mortar retailer as well, a, a, a shop that you can go and see. Um, it has a contact details on their website, you know, um, Australian address, you know, that sort of tells us that they're a reliable business going to be around for a while. If there's none of those details on there, you need to show a little bit of caution with that. Do all the research before you press the, you know, the enter button, you know, there's all this stuff here. Don't just jump into it because it will be difficult to it can be difficult to reverse some of that stuff, you know. If you get something from overseas and need to return it, how do you think you're going to do that? Do you think they're always going to pay for it? Sometimes they will. But with 
you know, big bulky items, that's another story, right? We see people buying products from overseas that are so, that are so unsafe, it's not funny, you know? Um, so it does happen, you know? But people don't know, you know? But if you do your research, you'll understand that, you know, that there are safer alternatives. You need to check if the product's subject to a mandatory standard. And there was that list I gave you, particularly for the nursery products. Um, so if they can't confirm over their website that it complies with Australian standards that it should be, don't buy it. We see people buying, for, for example, car seats from, from overseas or bringing them back from overseas holidays that you can't use in Australia. So they're driving along quite merrily and the police officer will pick them up and say that child seat doesn't comply with our standards. And they're stunned. They contact us and say, well, you know, it was safe in America or, or you know, the UK or somewhere. So be mindful of that too. So it's not necessarily the same all over the world. Although there is a move to, um, to make standards consistent across the country, across the world, I mean. Look, and once again, this goes back to the same old message. Choose wisely, you know. Think about it before you press the final, the final button. Because as I said, you know, you may have problems later on trying to get get a refund if something goes wrong. Alrighty, now, I'm just going to talk for very briefly about our Baby Sling Safety Campaign, which we've kicked off at the show here this weekend. And you may have seen some um, stuff on the news last night. They tell me I was on, you know. Um, that thing about adding 10, you know, if you go on 10, if you go on the TV, it adds 10 kilos to your weight. Well, in mine, it added about 20. So, you know, I'm like, oh my goodness, was that really me? But getting back to the Baby Slings campaign, over the next 12 months, we've got a, we're, we're running a, a, a mainly internet and social media based campaign on the safe use of baby slings. Sadly, we've, over the last three years, we've seen three children suffocate in baby slings in Australia. You may say, well, that's not a huge amount of children when you compare it to road accidents and stuff like that. But we think it's something that's really easily preventable, you know, with a bit of good guidance and information provided by, by us and other um, service providers. We think those can be reduced to zero. Now, there's two, th there's two major things you need to think about when using a baby sling. Don't have your child in the lying down in what we call the C position, where the chin is, is pressed against the chest, because there's potential there to have the airways blocked, and subsequently, you know, the child could, um, the child could suffocate. And they're also having the face pressed against the the wearer's chest or the material in the, in the baby sling. They're the two areas that the child will suffocate on. Babies that are premature and have low birth weight, you need to talk to a health professional before you use a sling for those, those children. We always recommend that, and others recommend too, that the child, wherever be in the vertical position, you need to see the, be able to see the face at all the times. The mouth and the nose needs to be clear. You need to be able to see that at, at any time. Now, in terms of choosing a sling, of course, you need to... And I, I can't believe I still see this. We see some products come with no instructions at all. And some slings are actually quite complicated to put on if you're not used to it, right? Or if you haven't got someone there to help you. But, so you, it needs to come with detailed instructions on how to use it. Or by all means, ask the shopkeeper to show you how to do it, you know? Some of them do provide information and DVDs and, and, and things like that. But I've seen a lot of information that's actually quite wrong. So you probably need to pick up one of these leaflets here and have a look at the video, it's on YouTube, all the details will be on there, just to how to go about that. And take your, of course, take your baby with you as you're buying one, you know. Doesn't seem to make much point otherwise, you know, to make sure that it'll be suitable for that child. Ask for a demonstration how to use it, very important, as I said, some of the information is all over the place with baby slings, you know. And even though the, you know, this baby slings aren't banned for supply or anything like that, they're perfectly safe to use if you use it properly. But some may be kind of safer than others. The ones that can hold the child in the vertical position are, are in our opinion, would be a safer alternative, perhaps, than the ones that are perhaps like a pouch where the child can actually get almost completely covered in it. You might not see the child. You might not be able to see what's going on in there. And that was a couple of incidents that, um, the couple of incidents that we've seen, it doesn't seem to be in that situation where the child was, was covered in that way. Alrighty, there's, there's a simple message for, for sling safety that we're trying to get everybody to talk about. It's called five ticks, right? 
The five ticks of baby sling safety. One, tight. Make sure the baby's tight and vertical at all times, huh? In I, that's the second, that's the second letter in ticks. It's um, in view at all times. Keep your baby's face uncovered. Be able to see the nose and mouth, and they're uncovered at all the time, huh? Close enough, close enough to kiss on the head, you know? K, keep the chin off the chest at all times. I spoke about that, keeping the child out of the C position. And S is for a supported back. Make sure the back's supported like that or facing out that way. So the nice and vertical. If you do that, hopefully, we won't see any more sling incidents in Queensland. I certainly hope so. Um, well, that's just about bang on 20 minutes. As I said, we've, run a, we've got a short film over running on our website. It's also available on YouTube now. So feel free to do that. Happy to take a few questions or if you want to come over to our website, I'll be over there for a short period. Well, I'll be over there for a while, actually. There'll be someone over there for the next two days. And um, on that, I think I'll uh, stop talking. Thank you very much.